everybody. So today we are going to be talking about my top 30 locations to find data sets for machine learning. So this is going to be rapid fire. I'm going to only say a little bit about the data set. I'm going to show an example over here as we go along. All of the links will be down below. Let's go get started. Okay, number one is Google. Google has a data set repository that you can search with keywords. You can also filter by what kind of data format you're looking for, what kind of code you might be wanting to run. It also gives you a really great simple overview when you do find anything on it. So it's a good one to start out if you're just trying to find your way. Next is Kaggle, that's number two. Kaggle is one of those ones that I think a lot of people are familiar with only because it's one of the biggest data sources out there that is used for hackathons and other kind of competitions. That's another part of it that you might like. You actually get to talk to fellow researchers and other scientists about the data set, the code you're running, and any problems you might have. Next up is Earth Data. This one has a very high fidelity of quality because it is generated and maintained by NASA and those that are working with NASA. That's a key to this. This one is actually coming from a global population of scientists, but it has that high fidelity because NASA is overseeing it. This one specifically is good for time series data and anything with geospatial data requirements because that's essentially what the entire data set is focused on. The next is registry of open data on AWS. Now this one will also have some overlap with other data sources that we are going to go over, but this is another aggregator where people that are creating their own data sets can actually register them. So you might actually find things there you might not find in other ones that we've mentioned on this list. In that same vein, Azure or Azure, whichever one you say, has its own repository of open data, very similar to what AWS offers, except of course, each of these is going to be calibrated specifically for using the machine learning tools that come with each of those tool sets. Next is the FBI Crime Data Explorer. So this one is interesting for a few different reasons. First of all, it's one of the largest data sets of crime and often non-crime uh, related data, but it also is riddled with problems. So keep that in mind if you are going to work with it, but it actually offers an interesting conundrum. How would you deal with a data set that is that dirty or has specific types of issues with it? So that's another reason you might want to look at this one. Another one that isn't often mentioned, but one that I am very familiar with is that from data.world. They have been on this channel quite a few times. Here's a link up above to see what they're all about. So data.world also has an open repository of data sources. It's sort of similar to the Google search on data sources. But one thing I like about the data.world is it also gives you the sub files so you can actually dig into things before you actually download anything. So you don't have to worry about that whole zip file thing if you don't want to. Interested in nuclear research or subparticle systems? Well, CERN has that for you. CERN is one that surprisingly I have used before. Uh, it has a lot of data associated with it, but it is again, highly curated. So if you really want high fidelity in your data sources, this is a good one to check out if you're interested in this sub type of data. Here's one you might be familiar with only because you use it and that's Reddit. Reddit has its own data source where you can gather up the data from all across Reddit and the subreddits and actually use that to do some of your machine learning. This is a great one for any kind of sentiment analysis, trust analysis, <laughs> um, any kind of network analysis, time series. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with this data set as with other ones that are in that social media category on this list. University of California, Irvine. So this one is very popular as is the next one on the list, which which is Carnegie Mellon. Thank you very much. I've worked on some of those quite a few times. Um, and in both of these cases, they are again, aggregations of open data sources with uh, UC. That one is really focused on the problem. What kind of analysis are you trying to do? Are you doing cluster analysis? Are you doing regression analysis? And you can filter the data set by the problem you are trying to solve. Now with Carnegie Mellon, that one actually has uh, something I used to use back in the day um, called Lemur, which is more on the algorithm side where you can actually do some NLP. Stanford, of course, has some, there's a lot of others that fall in that category. If you are interested in sources for algorithms and libraries in a list, let me know down below. So CMU has a lot of cultural heritage, art, music, those types of data sources. 
And again, I have used this one in my past. It's really fun to use. It's really easy to use and I highly recommend it. If you're interested in finances, Data Hub is one to go and check out. It covers anything in the financial industry, including cryptocurrencies, different stock prices, a lot of things, anything to deal with money. That's where Data Hub comes in. Since we are now a little over halfway through the list, one that contains a ton of open data sources is the Linked Open Data Cloud. This one has things from different governments, different um, nonprofits. There is a ton of data that you can find if you go to the Linked Open Data Cloud. And the nice thing is it's all linked open data, which means it's got some kind of creative commons on it. Most of the time it's structured in a linked data format so you can easily get to it. And there's a lot of other people using those same data sources. So there is the Million Song Database. This one is really cool if you wanna do something with recommendation engines. Um, I've talked about a few different recommendations for music on the channel before. A lot of them use this data source in combination with others, but it's a good one to start out with if you're doing anything with recommendation and music. Another one, if you are hungry, is Yelp. Yelp actually has a great data set that includes how much money that you have to spend at a restaurant, how well it is according to stars, where is it, geolocation, that sort of thing. It might actually help you look at trends for what kind of food people like. There's something called the Wayback Machine. If you are not familiar with it, it basically takes a snapshot of the internet almost every single day, or it is every single day. And you can actually use a lot of that data to train your machine learning models. Just be aware, it is historical data. So be very careful with what you're doing with that. Another that might be pretty popular for you, and it is mostly focused on images, is the Google Deep Fake Databases. And this is something that if you're trying to figure out it's not really Tom Cruise, this is one to go and check out. Or if you wanna just learn what a deep fake is, it's a good place to start. Another is Deep Fashion. This one is an image database, but it is focused on jewelry, clothes, and general fashion topics. So tried and true ones like WordNet is here, where WordNet is going through the lexical morphisms of text and what they actually mean. Be warned, just like the next one we're going to talk about, Wikidata. Both of these, while very common and very robust, are often outdated. So just be careful what you're using this with your machine learning. And I would say that goes for all of the data sets we're talking about here. You always wanna check what's in your data source before you train your machine on it. But these two specifically, I have used in my past and been bit before because there are some very outdated terminology in there. So make sure you watch out for that. Another that's very common is IMBD. Now this one, I know for sure you cannot use commercially um, and you wanna check again for all of these to make sure you can use them commercially, but IMBD specifically is now owned by Amazon. So make sure that you don't use it for any commercial purposes, but it is a great way to look at network analysis. You can actually even see if you pair it up with like Google News for certain celebrities, how they act and some of the troubles they're going through, how that has affected their career trajectory. Kind of cool analysis, plus a ton of other things on the different titles and you know what kind of genres certain actors are usually in, which directors did better on what kind of genres, all kinds of cool data. In that same vein is Movie Lens. This is similar to IMBD, but it's specifically for movie recommendations based on your preferences. So if you wanna go and find out how the recommendation works, go and try to recreate or re-engineer what they're doing. And you can also use their open data source to train your own models. YouTube has a entire database full of things for you to train on what are popular topics, what topics have the most videos, which ones go viral, in which categories. There is so much data associated with YouTube. If you wanna look at my analytics on YouTube, check out this video up above that you can use if you wanna train your model. So this is a great one for topical um, trend analysis, network analysis even, because a lot of influencers and people on YouTube interact with each other and they comment on each other's stuff. Uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can go check out. Same with things like Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn, all of those social media things all usually have some open data source that you can go and check out. One that you might not think about is 
housing and how people are migrating, especially uh, since the pandemic, how people are relocating, um, where uh, certain prices of houses and how that has moved over the years with time series, uh, what kind of neighborhoods, whether there's crime in certain ones, all that kind of um, housing data is in Zillow. They actually have their own data source, so that's a good one to go and check out. So I've often used the NLP index. That's one that you might not have heard of before. I really like that one because it's specific to NLP data sources and algorithms. So it's kind of a mix between the two and it's not highly curated. So again, take it all with a grain of salt, but it's a good one to go and check out if you haven't looked at it before. Here are two that might be, I don't wanna say controversial, but kind of on the odd side. So the first is the idioms. So one thing that is interesting when you're looking across different cultures, even in America, is different regions have different idioms. Um, a hot potato or uh, kill two birds with one stone. Don't be a peeping Tom. These are all idioms. And unless you have that background understanding, you might not understand it. In fact, you might not know this Klingon that's from Star Trek, actually have it, has its own idioms. So this is a good one to go and check out if you are trying to understand NLP and you're finding a lot of those colloquialisms in the actual text. Another one, sort of in that same vein, is the Urban Dictionary. There's a lot of disgusting gross stuff, okay? So if you are a sensitive person, don't go there. <laughs> However, it is a useful thing to understand maybe what you want to not train your machine learning on to create a better stop word or kill word list. There are ways to use the Urban Dictionary for good. Just be very, very careful with what you do with it because there's a lot of spicy things in there. And the last two I will go over are more specific, but again, in that cultural vein. So one is called Kanshido, and I am probably saying that incorrectly, so I apologize. And that is a Japanese name lookup. So if you are trying to use the uh, Japanese form of the word and translate it into Roman characters, that's a good one to go and check out. And I've used that in my past to understand better with author names and publications. Another is the Hapu Data Repository. That is a very specific dialect to certain peoples in Australia. So if you're interested in learning more about this very unique language, that's one to go and check out. And last but certainly not least is GitHub, our friend that we constantly are using, I'm sure. So not everything on GitHub will have a data set, but there are a ton of data sets available through GitHub. So go and check it out because there's certainly some cool things that you can dig into there. All right, so that was a whirlwind of my top 30 data sources and a few extra in there probably. And let me know, did I miss one that you really love? Is there anything that um, you've used and you want to let me know your stories, whether they're good, bad, ugly, fantastic, leave it all in the comments below. So with that, I want to thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.